Hi everyone, it's Joel from 8400 Lights. Now I am always looking for ways to improve the audio quality on my display, and this year I ran across a really great video from the 2020 Virtual Christmas Summit called Transmitting Your Audio Over FM by Jason Rasmussen. But in that, he talks about a number of different ways to optimize your audio files, amongst other things, and also ways to improve your FM transmission. Now this is the FM transmitter that I'm using in my display. It's a little Range Star unit, uh, and it comes with the standard rubber ducky antenna. And one of the things that Jason said in his video as a way to improve your FM transmission is to replace this antenna with a different one. And one of the easiest antennas to build is what's called a dipole antenna. Now I've never built one of these before, but it looked to be pretty easy from what I was reading about it online, so I thought I would construct one here. Okay, so what do we need in terms of parts to make a dipole antenna? Well, first of all, you need something that can act as your antenna. Uh, something that is electrically conductive. So, I just happen to have a bunch of old electrical cable. This is Romex is what it's commonly called, used inside house wiring, and you'll need some of that. Uh, you'll also need a little bit of uh, one inch PVC pipes. I've already got mine cut down to the sizes that I want. We'll talk about that. Uh, a PVC T connector, and I should say that these are one inch. Uh, a 90 degree elbow, a couple of end caps, a couple of washers that are big enough to fit over the pipe but yet fit inside our end caps, like so. Something that is not electrically conductive to make a little adapter plate. Uh, this is just an old cutting board that I had in our kitchen. And a little bit of coax. So I got some old RG6 coax that I have around here. So a dipole antenna looks to be a pretty easy build. And the plans that I'm going to use today, I got off the DIY Christmas forum. I'm going to make a few modifications to that. Uh, but the way you start with a dipole is by calculating how long your actual antenna segments are. Because the one disadvantage of a dipole is you have to cut your antenna segments based on the frequency you're transmitting on. Now there's a number of different calculators that you can find on the web. Uh, in terms of the formula, and I can put the formula up here as well, but it's easier just to go online and, and find a calculator that does it for you. Uh, if you can, find a calculator that gives you results in feet and inches versus uh, a calculator that gives you results in decimal, because then you're trying to figure out uh, what uh, a decimal value is into feet and inches. Uh, because one of the things about a dipole is you really want to make sure that you cut your antenna segments to the correct length. So in my case, I transmit on 97.9 megahertz, and that gave me an antenna length of 2 feet 4 and 11 sixteenths inches uh, for each segment of the dipole, and there's two segments. So the first thing that I did was to cut some of that uh, Romex cable uh, about uh, three feet. You want to make it a little bit longer than your antenna length and strip out the metal uh, conductor, the ground conductor, out of that because that's the only one that you're going to use. Uh, you probably could use either one of the white or the black conductors as well. I don't think it really matters if uh, your, your conductor, your antenna component here uh, has the insulation on it or not, but uh, why bother having that when we're not going to use it? So here is one of my antenna conductors, and then after uh, splitting this out from the Romex, I'll go ahead and start cutting it down to length. Now on mine, I chose to put these little loop connectors on the ends of it, and then, uh, which are a crimp connector, but then I went ahead and soldered uh, that connector on as well, just for a little extra strength. Uh, and after doing this on one end, I measured out my 2 feet 4 inches uh, 11 sixteenths and I want to make sure that I go from this end to this end and get that as close as possible 
because that really does make a difference with the dipole antenna that I still have red. So I have two of those. So after that, I took a little piece of coax here and stripped down, and this is what's going to connect to my antenna pieces. Uh, and I have the solid terminal or solid conductor strand out of the coax uh, coming up to one of these connectors. And again, I went ahead and soldered that. And then on the other one, uh, this is the ground shield that I've twisted together and then put a little bit of heat shrink on and then put it on, again, another one of these connectors and soldered that connector for a little bit of extra strength. Here is my center board where my two antenna pieces are going to connect to my coax and I've just gone ahead and drilled a couple of center holes here where I'll make my connections and then some smaller holes on either side where I'm going to tie this down with some zip ties. Uh, again, depending upon the instructions you might find uh, will call for these connections here to be soldered. Uh, some will have additional holes in here and you make a loop here to, to act um, as an anchor point, uh, but this is just how I did mine. Now one tip that I will give you is in the width of these, make sure that the width is such that it will actually slide into your main PVC pipe. Alright, let's go ahead and start assembling our dipole antenna. Now you'll want to start, or at least I want to start, by threading our coax feed line in through our T connector and out one side. And then we can start to assemble it onto our center connector. So we'll take one of our antenna leads and just go like this. A little lock washer on there and a nut. Tighten that down. And then you want to take your other antenna lead, feed it through the top. I'm going to try not to bend your antenna lead. And you'll note that I'm putting my bolts so that one faces up and the other faces down. I don't really think that's uh, required, but I just thought it wouldn't be a bad thing to do. And then with these two little extra holes that I grilled on my mounting block here, uh, I'm just going to run a cable tie around those and just as another little support for the antenna wire to keep it in place. Again, not required, it was not in the original design, but I uh, thought it wouldn't be a bad modification to do. Some of the other designs have you drill multiple holes in the mounting block here to act as an anchor point rather than using these terminals. Some of them will have you solder these connections together, which wouldn't be a bad idea actually. But I'm going to try mine this way. We'll trim these extra leads off. And what we want to do is go ahead and work this back into the center of our T here. Okay, so it should kind of look like that. And as a warning, it may take quite a bit of manipulation to get that in there. Uh, I really had to adjust my connectors from side to side uh, and really kind of push so hopefully everything is okay. Again, we want to try to keep our antenna wires as straight as possible as well. Okay, the next step in the process is to go ahead and assemble these PVC pipes to cover up our antenna leads. Uh, you'll want to make sure that your pipe is about an inch or so longer, and probably not more than that, than your antenna lead, because we're going to take a cable tie and run it through this end on the antenna lead that we have here. Uh, and use that in conjunction with the washer and the little bar to act as a tensioning device to keep some tension on our antenna lead. Now in my case, I'm going to go ahead and glue all of my pipes together because I intend to mount my antenna outside and I want it to be waterproof. But if you are going to use yours inside, you maybe wouldn't have to do that if you didn't want to. Now with this first and pipe glued in place uh, at our T-junction. I'm going to go ahead and take our cable tie and thread it through the top of our washer here, like this, so that the tie end of it gets stuck on the top. 
and then take the other end and thread that through the connector we have on the other end of our antenna. And this is why you want this to be pretty close to the same length but a little bit longer than your antenna wire so that you can reach in and do this. And then I'll take that cable tie and run it back up through the other side on the other side of my little bar there and go ahead and secure that. And I'll go ahead and do the same on the other side here. With both sides done, I can now go ahead and start to put some tension on my center antenna wire by tightening up each end with the cable tie. Alright, so now I have these cable ties all tensioned up on each end. Again, you don't want to put a lot of tension on them, but uh, you want to have some tension, keep that wire straight. For me, these pipes ended up being 28 and a half inches long. Again, yours will vary depending upon how long uh, your antenna wire gets to be uh, on the frequency that you're transmitting. Uh, but um, you want to, again, make sure that they're just a little bit longer than your antenna wire so that you can actually feed that zip tie through and get that. So now I'm going to go ahead and glue these caps on the tops. There, now I have caps on each of these ends. So now I have a nice, tight, waterproof seal on my antenna. So now for the feed line, we'll work on this next. Before I close this next part up, I want to go ahead and mark which part of my antenna is connected to the center line of the coax and which part is connected to uh, that outer shield of braid. And in my case, the center line, center conductor, uh, is this part of the antenna here, so I'm just going to go ahead and write a little T on this. Typically with these, you would orientate them vertically, uh, and this would be considered the top. This is that center conductor of the coax, uh, and this is that shielded braid. So we want to keep track of which side is the top side. Now another thing that you can do is to put what's called, and I hope I pronounce this right, you can put what's called a balen on your coax line. Uh, coax is an unbalanced transmission where a dipole antenna is considered to be a balanced method. Uh, no, I'm not going to go into what all that means. Uh, if you're interested, you can certainly do some research on Google. Uh, partly I'm not going to go into it because I don't even understand it all myself. But uh, I've always seen these little ferrite connectors before and they are there to help reduce noise and interference that can come on a line. Uh, and it's been recommended, although it's not 100% necessary, to add them right here at the point where our coax cable connects to our antenna line or very close to that. Uh, so this is one that I got. It came as part of a, a kit of a whole bunch of them off Amazon. So I'm just going to go ahead and connect this, uh, attach this right here to this end, right, like so. And then I'm just going to use a couple of small cable ties uh, on either side of it to make sure it doesn't really go anywhere. Like this. And then I'll just put another one around the balen itself uh, just to make sure that it stays closed and locked. So 
Now that won't go anywhere, it can't move. Clip these off. Like that. So now we'll have uh, a little device here to help, uh, again, reduce any interference or static or anything that we might get from transitioning from this coax line into our antenna wire. So the next thing is I cut a six inch piece of PVC and we're going to glue that right here. So this will come off this point here. There, go ahead and glued on this six inch piece of PVC and note that that balin fits snugly right inside that and is now hidden from view. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and glue this 90 degree connector on and we're going to glue it on such that it orientates downward from our top marker here. So this is again the top of our antenna or the point, the part of the antenna that we want to be upwards in our vertical mounting. Uh, so we'll go ahead and orientate this 90 degree angle this way so it points down. Okay, our next piece of PVC is then going to come off of this 90 degree angle like this and just kind of serve as a little mounting bracket that we can use to mount this antenna. Uh, the 6 inch PVC, and the reason we, we want to use this as our mounting bracket, is it's recommended that these antennas be about 6 inches away from things. So this serves as a nice standoff and at the same time uh, we get this nice mounting handle here as well. Uh, this can be basically any size you want. I chose to make mine about 8 inches, so we'll put that in. Okay, so now this is glued in place, and here is where I made another change from a lot of the designs that I've seen online. And that is, they tend to have uh, the coax then for the antenna, the feed line, running out of this bottom part of the antenna here. And for that to work, you would have to know how much coax uh, you wanted to have between your antenna and your transmitter and then you'd have to store all this stuff uh, in one big mess. Uh, with my show I like to break things down and store them individually in pieces uh, as well as I tend to move things around from year to year. So I decided I'd rather have a connection point here and that way I can move my antenna around and make different pieces of coax between my transmitter and my antenna uh, as I need. So what I did was take another one of these end caps and I took an F connector and drilled a hole in the end cap and then just inserted my F connector in it and then put an F connector on the end of my coax here. So I will connect this up and then glue it in place to seal up my antenna and then my antenna is totally waterproof. And there, we have our completed dipole antenna. Uh, one tip is, if you're going to do this kind of end connector here, make sure that your wire isn't too long, because you've got to be able to shove it back up into this tube here, and make sure that it's not too short as well. So the only thing that's left is to paint it black, and in order to do that, I'm going to sand it real quick, uh, just give it a light sanding to scuff up the plastic so the paint has something to adhere to, and then we'll test it out. Okay, it's been a couple of days now since I painted the antenna, and I actually ended up mounting it up in a tree on the side of the yard. It seemed to be the best place to give it some height. So let's try it out and see if it works. Here I have my show computer set up, and we've got the sequence editor open with a sequence on it. And then I have my transmitter here, my range star. Now I had to get a little adapter here in the back that goes from the TNC connector that comes out of the transmitter to an F style connector, uh, but that was pretty easy to do, no big deal. And then this is just a ground loop isolator that I use to help keep my audio clean and then of course my cord that runs from the back of the transmitter and we'll plug into my laptop. So we'll go ahead and start the sequence and make sure that we've got some sound coming out of the laptop.
And we do. So now we'll go ahead and plug in our transmitter and turn it on. So as you can see, we're broadcasting on 97.9. And now we'll go turn on a radio that I have here in the shop and we should hear this sequence. And success, it works. Okay, here's the real test of that new antenna. Before, I would get static just in the front of the house, and that's only a couple hundred feet. So here I've driven to a spot about a half mile away, and let's see if we can get anything on our radio station. And there it is, totally crystal clear. So I hope you can see how easy it was to build that dipole antenna and how much of an improvement you get in your audio quality and distance when transmitting on an FM transmitter. Thanks a lot for watching and please check out our other videos.